Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Kalpali Pomona and in this lesson we are going to talk about confidence interval and hypothesis testing for two populations averages. So in this case, depending on whether we can assume the variance of the two populations are the same or they are not the same, uh, we have different approaches to develop the confidence interval and hypothesis testing. So we're going to talk about each of these cases separately, but we're going to start with the cases where we can assume the variance of the two populations are known. So remember, in the previous lesson, we talked about the sampling distribution of uh, the difference between the average um, mean of the two populations. We learned that if we have only one population, we can say the average of the samples follow a normal distribution with average of mu and the standard deviation of sigma over square root of n, where n is the sample size, and the sampling distribution of the difference between the two population average is normal, and the average is equal to mu minus mu2, and the standard deviation is the square root of the sigma square 1 over n1 and sigma square 2 over n2. We're going to use these definitions to develop some confidence interval and hypothesis testing for the difference between averages of the two populations. But before we move on, remember the whole purpose here is that we typically don't know what the mu and sigma are, and we try to come up with some approximation for the actual mu look by looking at the samples. So that's the whole idea of sampling process. Uh, let's take a look at the confidence interval for two population average, and we assume that the variances are known. We know that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is normally distributed with these parameters, and we know that in this case, to standardize x bar 1 minus x bar 2, we have to deduct the mu and divide that, the, the, the difference by the standard deviation of the distribution, which in this case is uh, square root of sigma square 1 over n1 plus sigma square 2 over n2. So that's the standardized z in this case. Now suppose that I'm interested to find the lower bound and upper bound for the difference between the actual averages of the two populations. So we don't know what is the actual average GPA of Kalpali, Pomona, and San Luis Obispo. And we want to find an uh, interval for this difference. We call the lower, we show the lower bound with L and upper bound with U. Basically, we want to find that interval so that the difference between the actual mu's falls between these two numbers with some probability, which in this case is 1 minus alpha. So if I find that lower bound and upper bound, we call that confidence interval, and this value here is called confidence level. So confidence level is how much you want to be sure that the average falls between the two numbers of L and U. So we are interested to find this lower bound and upper bound, and for that I'm going to use the property of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 in this case. So according to definition of z of alpha, we said z of alpha is the z value that the area after that is equal to alpha. So if I have z of alpha divided by 2, I can say the area after z of alpha divided by 2 is going to be alpha divided by 2. Also the area before negative z of alpha divided by 2 here is going to be alpha divided by 2 as well. So it leaves me with 1 minus alpha for the area between negative z of alpha divided by 2 and z of alpha divided by 2. So I'm going to use this uh, property to basically develop my upper bound and lower bound. So I write that probability that z is between negative z of alpha divided by 2 and z of alpha divided by 2 is equal to 1 minus alpha. Now this graph is a better representation of what I just uh, draw earlier. So you can see this area is equal to 1 minus alpha. Now, we have a z already defined up here as this term, so I'm going to replace that z inside the z that I have in, in that probability. If I do that and multiply the two sides of this inequality by uh, the sigma term, and then also keep mu1 minus mu2 inside in the middle and add x bar 1 mi uh, minus x bar 2 to th both sides, I get this term which we call the confidence interval. So I can say mu1 minus mu2 is going to fall between these two values with uh, 1 minus alpha probability. So we call this a confidence interval. Now what's this, uh, why this is important? Because I can then test any hypothesis. For example, you might ask me, 
Can I say, is there any difference between uh, average GPA of Cal Poly Pomona and San Luis Obispo? I can answer that question by finding the confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2. I take a sample from Cal Poly, I take a sample from San Luis Obispo, then I have the x bar, and if I have the standard deviation of the two population, and I know my sample size, and also I have a level of confidence, let's say I want to be 95% confident, I can plug it into this equation and find that interval. If the zero falls into this interval, that means there is no significant difference between the average of the two population in terms of their GPA. So the average GPA of the two population is the same. However, if both lower and upper bound fall into positive, or both fall into negative values, that means your interval doesn't include zero, and therefore there is a difference between these two population average GPAs. The confidence interval helps us to test hypotheses that we can make for the difference between the two population average. Not only uh, we have a confidence interval for test of uh, hypothesis, but also we have a formal way of testing hypothesis, which is kind of driven from the same method that we just developed here for developing confidence interval. Let's see what is the formal process of hypothesis testing. First, you have to set up your null hypothesis. What is that you're testing and what is the alternative of that hypothesis? So in this case, we want to know whether the difference between the two population is equal to some value. So D null here, it's some hypothesized value. It's something that you want to test for. For example, if you're testing whether there is a difference between the two um, school uh, GPA, then you just put zero because you want to know if the mu1 is equal to mu2, so that difference would be equal to zero. Otherwise, it's not equal to zero. So that D0, it's a value that you have to put, and it comes from your problem statement or the hypothesis that you're trying to test. The next step is to calculate your test statistic. So the test statistic in this case, because you have known variances, is going to be this z. So now you have to calculate that z value. And remember, when we calculated the z value here, we want it to be between negative z of alpha and z of alpha, except that this time, when you do a test of hypothesis, you have to put a hypothesis value for the mu1 minus mu2. So basically, test of hypothesis and confidence interval following the same set of steps, except their formal uh, way of doing them is different. For a confidence interval, you calculate this equation here, and you see where the difference between mu1 minus mu2 falls, and you see whether your mu falls into this region or not. But for hypothesis testing, you calculate this z, this t statistic, statistic, and you see if whether it falls between the negative z of alpha divided by 2 and z of alpha divided by 2. So the next step, the third step in hypothesis testing, is to see whether this value falls into this interval or not. If it does, you fail to reject the null hypothesis, otherwise you're going to reject the null hypothesis. So if z, the test statistic, falls within this region, we, our acceptance region, we fail to reject the null. Basically, we don't have enough evidence to say that the null hypothesis is not true. Otherwise, we reject it. If it doesn't fall into this region, we reject the null hypothesis. So there is a similarity between confidence interval and test of hypothesis, except that the uh, confidence interval is more generic because when you have this interval, you can test for many differences and see whether that difference falls into this region or not and make a conclusion. However, for a test of hypothesis, you have to set your hypothesis on some amount. And for each amount, you have to calculate the z and see whether that falls into this region or not. So if I ask you to test a hypothesis, this is the formal way of test of hypothesis. Three step. Set up your hypothesis, calculate the test statistic, and see whether it falls within the region or not. So that's the three step. So I mentioned that if z falls into this region, we fail to reject the null. I didn't say we accept the null hypothesis. And the reason for that is because if you calculate the, uh, the confidence interval, you see that there are so many mu1 minus mu2, there are so many d's that falls into this region. So for a lot of this d that you put in here, for a lot of hypotheses, you might end up not rejecting the not a null hypothesis. So therefore, we don't say we accept that mu1 minus mu2 is equal to d0, because it could be d0 or anything around that, and we end up not rejecting the null hypothesis. Therefore, if I say we accept that is equal to 0, as it's the same as we're saying that we don't accept any other values 
of the differences that are acceptable, which is not true because according to this definition, we know that there is a range of these zeros that if we replace here is going to fall between these two numbers. And therefore, instead of saying we accept the null hypothesis, we say we fail to reject it. Basically, we don't have enough evidence to say that it is not equal to d0. So we therefore never uh, express our result in terms of acceptance of the null hypothesis. We say we fail to reject the null or we reject the null hypothesis. With this, uh, our lesson has concluded. Please refer to the next lesson for the one-sided confidence interval and one-sided hypothesis testing. Thank you for watching this lesson.